Hey love bugs and welcome back to my channel. If this look looks familiar, it's because I'm power filming. It's been a minute since I filmed. It's been like two weeks, two, three weeks since I filmed. I needed a YouTube break, guys. I just I needed a good YouTube break because whenever I take a break, it's because something is wrong. You know, <laughs> like I'm sick or somebody in my house is sick or I'm having like a little mental health crisis. But this time I just took a break because I wanted to just take a break. Like I have just been going out and hiking and just being creative and baking and just doing things that I enjoy. So that's what I have been doing. That's where I've been. But your girl is back. And y'all, I am here to give you guys a dose of nostalgia. I feel like, especially this last year with COVID, so many brands lost their luster, you know, like we've all been talking about it, how like nothing has been exciting at all. <laughs> the only thing that came out last year that was really like exciting for me was the Agilwood Blue Tansy collection. That was the only thing that was really exciting to me. Um, and the other things that I was excited about, like they didn't really like impress me. They weren't as good as they were, you know, projected to be. Like, we've been having a lot of discussions about how, like, is the natural hair community, like, dying and whatever. And I personally don't subscribe to that idea because I think a lot of people just forget that the natural hair community isn't made up of just, like, a handful of people. You can't count the natural hair community on one hand. And as much as certain people in this community like to act like, you know, this community isn't positive or this community is going nowhere. It really is just about the fact that we're all changing. We're growing up. A lot of us have figured out what makes our hair tick. We don't need a new hair growth hack every other week. A lot of us have realized that a lot of these hair growth hacks are trash. <laughs> and we're beyond just throwing any damn thing in our hair just because someone did it to go viral, you know? <laughs> like we've, we've gotten past this point, we've grown. We've grown in our hair journeys. So many of us who are still here understand our hair. And a lot of us here who watch natural hair videos, we watch them because of the people that create them, right? We watch them because we love that person's content. We love their personality. We love the things that they do. But all of us as a community are growing and we're changing and <laughs> that's just life, you know? Your favorite content creators are starting families, they're having babies and they don't have time to do natural hair tutorials anymore. Contrary to what people think, a normal wash day for me is like an hour, but like a wash day on camera can be three hours just because my shit won't act right, you know? <laughs> like it takes time. People don't have that kind of time. They're growing their families, they're starting businesses. They're doing new things and trying to elevate. And so are the people who watch us. And it's not that the natural hair community is dying. I think it's just that as we get older, and just like in anything else, we get very jaded, you know? We become very jaded. Things start to lose their luster. And I just wanted to just sit and reminisce over those times with y'all when the natural hair community was just so exciting and the new products that came out were just like hype and we would all be in Target and Walmart and wherever trying to find the new main choice drop or whatever. I just wanna give you guys a bit of nostalgia and I don't know, maybe this video won't go the way I hope, but I hope it does. So yeah, if you're interested in just going back down memory lane and having a little bit of nostalgia with me, then just keep on watching. So I think we all, have started in different places. We all kind of remember different things being big at different times. And I think that just kind of depends on like where you were um, when you started watching YouTube, right? Because natural hair community been popping for, for a long time when it comes to YouTube, blogs, you know, all sorts of stuff, right? But I was sitting here thinking like, y'all know I'm really into fragrance. Also, by the way, my fragrance of the day is Olympia Intense by Paco Rabanne. I'll have a link for her down in the description below. She's a salted caramel amber fragrance that is super sexy. If you want to get noticed, you should put her on. But especially with 
going into fragrance, like really getting into fragrance um, and doing more fragrance content, I kind of thought about how like scents really bring back memories for me. And there are just certain smells and things that really just like take me back to a different time and place. And I kind of wanted to just like talk about some of these things with you guys. I don't know. I think this is kind of corny, but I don't care. Like it makes me really happy. Um, so let's start with like the OG because we, we have all tried at least one product from this brand. Y'all, let's talk about Shea Moisture. Do y'all remember when Shea Moisture was that girl? When the products were popping and they were like, had just really started to come out with new things. But y'all remember back in the day, the only thing they really had was like the Shea Butter line and the Coconut Hibiscus line. And if you have used those, you remember what they smelled like, right? Like <laughs> The original Shea Butter line, like now when you think about it, it's like, it was okay, you know, like, but it was the best that you had at the time. And it just had this really like basic smell. Like the smell was basic, but that extra moisture detangler, y'all. Listen, I don't know how I was using that because I really shouldn't have been using it. It attracted way too much moisture from the environment into my hair. But you know, all the girls loved it. All the girls loved it. So I had to use it too. I had to use it too. This is before I was on YouTube. And I mean, like we were just going, going crazy for the girls. That raw shea butter mask, she won't that good. <laughs> But we was using her because she was what we had. She was what we had. But that coconut and hibiscus, listen, there was a long period of time where that curl enhancing smoothie was that girl. Like if you were natural, you were using curl enhancing smoothie, okay? Like that coconut pineapple smell that that had, like instantly I smell it. And I just think who who's using Shea Moisture? <laughs> You can still smell it in the air. Like I said coconut and hibiscus and y'all smelled it, didn't you? I bet y'all are going to be able to smell this whole video. <laughs> I remember when those products were actually good. Like they were really, really good. And there was a point where I had like everybody in my house using Shea Moisture because do y'all remember when Shea Moisture would do like those like buy three, get three sales at like um, Walgreens and CVS? Like you could... Like every three months they would do like a buy three, get three. And I would go in and just buy like all of the Shea Moisture, like <laughs> all the Shea Moisture that they had. Um, oh, and the, the African black soap, the purification mask. Do y'all, ooh, y'all that purification mask was love. And then that is really like, I feel like Shea Moisture is the reason why so many of us get butt hurt about reformulations because Shea Moisture changed their best products so many times that we were just like, 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 are you going to stop? Like, I remember there was a point where like one month you would see the jar and it was a new thing. And then the next month you would see the jar and it was another new thing. And then the next month you would see the jar and it was another new thing. And like every store you went to, it was like a different formulation. And we're just like, okay, what is happening? Like, I can't even trust this. Like this shit isn't even good anymore. <laughs> Shea Moisture was one of those people that literally had a new formulation of their product every month. And I think that just left us with whiplash. Like, <laughs> it was just too much. But do y'all remember that purification mask? Oh my, ugh. There was a time in my life where literally everything I owned was Shea Moisture. I didn't have anything that wasn't Shea Moisture, like, aside from, like, maybe, like, a jar of Cantu and like a random jar of something Camille Rose because I was starting to get into, get into more expensive things. Like what a time to be alive. Like just to think that I existed when Shea Moisture actually like made good products. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I had to pause because I realized that my eyelash was like disrespecting me. Like sis, how you think this is? You better stay your ass down. <laughs> At first I thought it was just like my eyelid, but then I was like, no, like my eyelash is like flopping around. Anyway, we, we can't take it back now. It is what it is. But yeah, Shea Moisture was like that girl. And like, what a time to be alive. Really, what a time to be alive. Every time I think about Shea Moisture, I just think about the coconut and hibiscus curl enhancing smoothie and how just tropical and overly sweet it smelled. Like, it, like, ugh the memory. And then speaking of curl enhancing smoothie, like can we be honest, either you were blessed with 
or you were victimized by the combination of using curl enhancing smoothie and eco olive oil together. <laughs> Can we just talk about eco styler for a second? Because you were not that girl if you were not using eco. Like everybody had eco videos. Everybody was doing reviews on every eco that came out, but like eco olive and eco crystal really started it all. Especially that eco olive. Everybody loved that stuff. It won't it for me, the the olive oil specifically. But that eco olive oil gel and that curl enhancing smoothie. Listen, the girls with the thick hair, the thick coarse hair, they were just loving it. And your girl was over here looking like she had been wearing a motorcycle helmet for like three years and had just taken it off because that was not it for your girl. The hair was moisturized though, but it did not look good. <laughs> but Eco Styler really had that moment because like, let's be real. I think a lot of us started our, our hair journeys in college. If you started your natural hair journey in college, let me know. I know me particularly, like I just couldn't keep up with getting my hair done. Like, and I think I had a relaxer that had gotten left in too long, but the only person that I trusted to do my hair was too far away. I was not, you know, worried about going to go see her and all that stuff. And I was messing up my hair, flat ironing, ironing it every night to go to the club. And, you know, <laughs> like how many of us destroyed our hair in college and were just like, okay, I'm transitioning. Like me and so many of the black girls at my school transitioned our freshman year because it just made sense. And so let's be honest, Eco, she's nice and expensive. Like when you living on college kid money, like you can't just be buying Camille Rose every week. Like you just can't. <laughs> it took me like getting a big girl job to like start getting into like really like natural, you know, the more like expensive natural hair products. And I was just lucky enough to get a big girl job really, really early on in college. Um, but yeah, Eco Styler was the wave. And then like, do y'all remember when that Jamaican black castor oil Eco Styler gel came out and we was all freaking out going to every beauty supply store <laughs> trying to find that damn Jamaican black castor oil. Like I remember me and all my friends was looking for this damn gel and we finally found it. But like it was every time Eco would drop a new like, gel like it, it was just crazy like the community just went wild you know until people started saying that it was gonna kill you <laughs> and somehow we still have not died from eco related illnesses but I digress <laughs> um a whole lot of y'all probably still using triethanolamine and don't know it and I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of our fave influencers are still using eco styler gel they just don't talk about it anymore because people get so up in their draws about it but I still use my Eco. I love my Eco Gold. She's bomb. I still use her on my off days. She's everything. Um, I need to pull out more of my Ecos because I need to use them. But I mean, you know, then they kind of got outed for being a trash company, which I'm sure shouldn't be surprising for anybody because like, do you really think something that's that mass market that only costs $2 for like a five gallon tub? is really gonna be paying their employees well. Like I I was never, <laughs> I was never naive enough to think that they were like the best company that were paying their people like $30 an hour. Like I, I never, um, but yeah, so <laughs> Eco had a huge rise and a huge fall, um, but she she's still part, she's still part of our mental, you know? Like we, we all know what Eco olive oil smells like. I think most of us know what that Jamaican black castor oil eco smells like too. <laughs> we were all up in it. It was it was the thing for us. Eco was my girl before I knew she sent it. So that curls passion fruit control paste. Like people may not have really liked a lot of like the curls like styling products, but it seemed like everybody had that passion fruit control paste, even though it ain't really do nothing. <laughs> I can smell it right now. I can smell it. Because one, it didn't smell like passion fruit. It smelled like like creme brulee kind of. It had the same smell as like the original like milk in the, the orange bottle. I can smell it right now. I used to be just slapping my edges with that passion fruit control paste. And it controlled not a damn thing. 
but I just knew I was doing something because I had Curls Passion Fruit Control Paste. I, and I was doing absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. It was just there, absorbing. Yeah, that's all it was doing. <laughs> the Oyen Handmade Burnt Sugar Pomade. To this day, that is the only product that I have used from Oyen Handmade. And I need to get it together because I know so many people love their products. And I, I'm sure it's for good reason because I remember this pomade and I ended up giving it to my mom because truthfully, I didn't really have a place for it in my hair routine at the time. I just got it because so many people were talking about it, especially like the type four naturals in the community. It was like every every type four YouTuber I watched was using Oyen Handmade Burnt Sugar Pomade. And it smelled so good. Like I kept it in my stash for a long time just because it smelled so good. Like it smelled like, um, it literally smelled like a caramelized brown sugar. It was a really nice pomade, but it was just too thick for my hair. I think I ended up giving it to my mom. But like when I think about my like experiences back in the day, like I just remember walking around smelling like burnt sugar pomade and it was not doing a single thing for my hair at all. Like I, I don't even think I knew what I was doing with it. I just had it because other people had it. And it smelled good. Like I picked it up at a random Target and it smelled amazing and I bought it. I think that was one of the purchases that I picked up in my series of buying a bunch of natural hair products after I got my first big girl job. Um, and I ended up giving it away because I didn't know what I was doing with it. I really didn't. Oh my God, y'all. Karen's Body Beautiful. Does anybody still use Karen's Body Beautiful? Like, does anybody? I, I, think, I think her website still exists. At one point, Karen's Body Beautiful was in Target, but I haven't seen that brand and Target in a very long time. Like, can we just give it up for how bomb the natural hair section of Target was like during the peak of like natural hair YouTube? Especially if your Target was somewhere where there was a whole lot of black people. Like, then your, your natural hair section was probably lit. Like every time I would go back home, I'm from Chesterfield County, Virginia, by the way. So every time I would go back home, I would go to the Target out there and like they would have the best natural hair section and I would just buy everything because like there was always something good in that section. <laughs> now it's like the natural hair section is just slowly dwindling. Every time I go in there it's even more disappointing. You mostly have the same like four gals like the main choice takes up a lot of space. Shea Moisture still takes up a lot of space. Um, oh my L. She's still taking up a whole lot of space with her mm, you won't let that go um and who else curls is still taking up a lot of space um but i feel like curls is kind of dwindling too curls has not really had any bangers like that like they haven't had bangers since do y'all remember how big that blueberry bliss collection was like everybody wanted some blueberry bliss i have my favorites from that collection like the mask from that collection is everything like put Put that on everything, y'all. <laughs> so good. But I haven't repurchased it in so long because her website, like, I get on it and I feel like I'm going to hear a, a freaking dial-up tone. Like, her, her website is just so outdated and still so difficult to use. And I don't understand why. Like, sis, please hire some people to work on your website, please. Um, but it's just always something when I go to buy curls. But I remember how big of a deal that line was when it came out like everybody was like freaking out about curls blueberry bliss and it's still to this day i think the best collection she's come out with like it, everything else that she came out with i think was just more expensive than it needed to be like the caviar collection most people ain't like that the um that green juice collection she had People weren't really rocking with that. She came out with the Pop and Pineapple collection, which I thought was going to do a little bit of something, but you couldn't find it anywhere. Um, nothing has popped off <laughs> for her like that since Blueberry Bliss. But I remember, like, I smell Blueberry Bliss and it makes me think, you know what Blueberry Bliss makes me think of? It makes me think of the Glam Twins because, like, they were, like, the face of curls for a good minute. Like, Mahisha was really, like, pushing the Glam Twins hard like taking them to every natural hair show and they were doing tons of videos for curls. And when I smell Blueberry Bliss, I think about the Glam Twins because they really were like 
the face of curls for a good minute but you know my Mahisha just couldn't keep that momentum I don't know it just the luster came real hard and then it left really fast <laughs> can't you she was drying the girl's hair out but I mean she was still a staple like, <laughs> like the smell of Cantu original products will always be burnt into my memory. Like there were so many like products, like drugstore products that I would just buy just for the sake of buying them. And Cantu was definitely one of them. Like I definitely had a Cantu phase. It's funny because Cantu is definitely one of those products that like kind of got my channel out there. I know so many of you guys started following me because of the video I did on Cantu. The, um that curl jelly that they had, the was it the custard? I think it was the custard. And it was like a video on like, does it flake? And you know, for the longest, like that's been a video that a lot of people found me because of um, that video specifically, but I can still smell it. I can smell all the products. And that product did not flake on me. It actually did really well. One of my favorite products. I think my brother ended up taking it from me. And then I like started using She Scent It and I just totally forgot about Cantu, but. <laughs> It was definitely like one of like the statement products in my collection at the time that gave me really, really great curls and also kind of got my channel popping. So thanks, Cantu. <laughs> was it Tresemme Perfectly Undone? I think it was Tresemme. It wasn't Pantene. I'm pretty sure it was Tresemme. Y'all, we was all hurt when they got rid of Perfectly Undone. Like, <laughs> like really... Tresemme Perfectly Undone walked so all of Shea Moisture's reformulations could run because, like, talk about being hurt. Like, out of all of the products in the community that we were obsessed with, like, conditioner was it. Like, you had to have a good conditioner. If you didn't have a good conditioner, you weren't popping. And at every natural had, like, that, that staple conditioner in their collection that was, like, their thing. Like, they would buy, like, big liter sizes of it and they would have like rows and rows of liter sizes of like their favorite conditioner in their stash for a lot of us it was the tresemme perfectly undone and i enjoyed that but for me it was the herbal essences hello hydration and every time like if i go somewhere and i forget my conditioner and i need to do my hair i'll pick that up and i remember how trash it is it smells so good like the smell of it takes me back to a different time and place especially because like that was definitely one of those like natural hair conditioners that a lot of naturals were pushing at the time but it was just it it, it didn't really do much like it was great if your hair was tangled like I would put a little bit of that in my hair and it would like get the tangles out so quick um it was definitely like crazy slippery like past slip and it did what it needed to do in that department, but as far as like actually like conditioning the hair and like making your hair feel good and healthy, like it really just did, it, it ain't do nothing. <laughs> but I just knew I was doing something with my Hello Hydration. Like we would have like just tubes and tubes and tubes of Hello Hydration. And before that for me, it was the Garnier Damage Repair um, Rinse Out Conditioner. Oh, that was so good so 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 good I love that conditioner so much it wasn't one that was like crazy talked about in the natural hair community but if you used Garnier at that time I know you remember what that smells like because Garnier always had this like specific scent this is before they started doing like the whole blend stuff but I think I ended up ditching that one because they had totally like botched the formula when they started taking parabens out of their formulations and stuff a lot of things back then got reformulated because like really like the, the whole paraben thing was being pushed and a lot of brands were taking parabens out of their products um and it ain't hit the same it didn't hit the same anymore um so i ended up leaving it for hello hydration but hello hydration won't well, mm -mm. Oh, and then there were there were those of us who were hooked on the VO5 as well. I tried VO5 and it she ain't do nothing for me, but I know a whole lot of people who like still live by VO5. But I mean, that strawberry VO5 conditioner, like are you we've all tried that before, right? Like I think most of us have tried that conditioner at some point. Um because it's cheap and like it detangles and it's easy to get out. I know a lot of people still use that as a pre-poo. Like VO5 was that gal the cream of nature original moroccan oil line listen talk about a fragrance bomb right because 
<laughs> and I think the worst thing was that so many of us, we just thought that we just knew for sure that argan oil was in something because of the smell. Because like every product that had like that marketed argan oil at the time, because you know, that was like the, the oil of that time. Like we had gone from jojoba and then argan like had her reign for a while. And then coconut oil really had her reign for a while until Natural 85 says she ain't like it. <laughs> um, but argan oil was that girl for a good minute. And every product that contained argan oil had that smell. Because we were it, it was all like that marketing of argan oil from Morocco. So they were trying to put this like kind of Middle Eastern scent in there. <laughs> And we all just knew that we was using something with a bunch of argan oil in it just because of how it smelled. And argan oil ain't got to smell, you <laughs> But we just thought we knew what we were doing. <laughs> I remember on YouTube, like, we were really be like, mm, it has that argan oil smell. And it's like, that is not that argan oil smell. That is some synthetic ass fragrance. But oh, that was like the first like natural hair product I ever used. Like I remember I didn't... I never big chopped, I just transitioned. Um, and that was like the product that I switched to at the time. And I really, really liked it. Like that shampoo, like to this day, I haven't tried it in a while, but it's definitely one of those shampoos that I definitely recommend. Like it was always so nice, very hydrating. And the conditioner that it came with, which eventually got really, really hard to find, but that stuff was really, really nice too. So I was just straightening my hair at the time, but I wasn't getting relaxers anymore. And it did really, really well, but it still did well when I had more curls in my head and I had stopped relaxing my hair too. It was actually like decent for, you know, drugstore. But every time I think about Cream of Nature, I just think about that Moroccan oil line smell. <laughs> because it just like, if you have used those products, you know that smell. And I would remember so many people saying like, I love Cream of Nature, but that, that man smell. <laughs> That man smell, like so many people just couldn't use it because it was so fragrant. Speaking of being so fragrant, like Miss Jessie's, like that was, that was the splurge for us naturals was Miss Jessie's. Cause Miss Jessie's prices was like, whew. and then eventually people were like, yo, why your stuff so expensive? And it has like whole life has petroleum in it. <laughs> But I, like everybody wanted to try Miss Jessie's. I remember, do y'all remember Curl Kit? Like for a while before Curl Box like really blew up, like Curl Kit was a big thing. Everyone was doing like Curl Kit unboxings. And like for a while they were like really, really, really good. Like they were giving like full lines of Shea Moisture and stuff. And then eventually like they just like hit a wall and just started giving out these shittiest boxes ever. And they had done a Miss Jessie's box and everyone was like so excited because they were like, oh, we're going to get some like full size Miss Jessie's. And they gave us these little pots. <laughs> they gave us these little pots of Miss Jessie's. I'm trying to remember, was there a full size product in that box? I don't even, I don't know if there was a full size product in that box. They didn't give us any of the new stuff. I think there was like quick curls. There was like the super sweet back treatment. And they had the buttercream and the baby buttercream. And then they had like the unscented buttercream. But like, they were all like this big. <laughs> and we all just went off. And after that, like Curl Kit just tanked. I think I'm, I still get emails from them, even though I have unsubscribed from their email list so many times. And I'm pretty sure they just be giving my email out to people. Like, I'm pretty sure anyone who's been on the Curl Kit email list has been victimized by the emails that they've gotten from these random brands they send our, our stuff out to. Um, but yeah, Miss Jessie's was like such a big deal. Like the curl pudding, the um, and the, the purple one. Like it looked like Kool-Aid. It smelled like Kool-Aid. I've used it and it didn't really do anything for my hair. It was just cool. Um, the curly meringue, she was cool. She smelled like a lemon meringue pie. Um, she, she won't do one a lot for me either, but she was cool. Um, there are a lot of people that still live by Miss Jessie's. I think mostly like the products in the tubes now, like the, um, so Transitioners Magic and they have like a coil custard, pillow soft curls. I know people were going crazy for it for a long time. I never used it because my hair was already soft enough. It would have felt like I had two feathers sitting on my head. 
but I remember it has this like fabric softener smell. For a long time, who was it? Taryn Guy, she was putting us all onto quick curls. I don't think she goes by that anymore, is it all set? Um, like so many, so many memories come to mind when I think about Miss Jessie's products because like Miss Jessie's was that girl because at that time, like as far as like expensive, more like luxury, somewhat unattainable hair care, like that, like that was that girl. Um, and then all the other brands like Kinky Curly and uh, Uncle Funky's at the time, um, Camille Rose, like they were starting to come out and then more most of us were starting to realize like Miss Jessie's is cool but a lot of these ingredients are trash like, <laughs> like it was literally the same ingredients that we were trying to get away from and like the hair care that we were already using just with better scents more interesting packaging at a much bigger price point <laughs> um but I just like have so many memories attached to Miss Jessie's products like I would probably never really use them again but the memories, oh, oh my God, <laughs> like, oh my God. Okay guys, so that is it for this video. I just wanted to sit down and just go down memory lane with you guys. I'm really curious, what are some of your like deepest memories connected to like natural hair products? Like, do certain products make you think of like a certain YouTuber? Do they make you think of a certain like time in your life? Like even the main choice tropical moringa stuff like i smell that and i i think about um mad curls and when they did their video on it and we were all like frantic trying to find it and courtney was like publicizing the box that she was gonna put out like remember when like courtney made stuff fun like i feel like courtney not being like the creative person and all of that kind of makes things just not so much fun anymore um but yeah, definitely let me know. Like, I'm curious to hear, like, what kind of, like, memories or ties do you have to a lot of, like, the popular products in natural hair? I'm really curious because I have so many. I could go on and on, guys. Like, this is just a small chunk. But if anything really takes me back the most, I would have to say anything Shea Moisture and Karen's Body Beautiful because I just thought I was that bitch because I had some Karen's Body Beautiful in my collection. <laughs> And I can still smell that leave-in, specifically the pomegranate scent, because it smelled so good. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if anything, I hope it just made you smile thinking about, you know, your natural hair journey and how much fun this community was. We still have people coming into the community that have no clue what they're doing with their hair. Um, and those of us who have stuck around just because we love each other, right? Like, this is... At the end of the day, I refuse to believe that this is a wholly negative community. Um, there's so much love in this community and there are so many beautiful memories tied to this community. So I hope that this kind of sparked a little bit of nostalgia in you. And I'm sure you could probably smell every product I mentioned in this video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.